Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It's Labor Day weekend here in the States, and for those who aren't familiar, that's a holiday where we celebrate work by doing as little of it as possible. There will be a lot of people putting in work this weekend even with the holiday though, as cleanup and recovery from Hurricane Ida is underway, and I wanted to open with a message of support for those who are affected. If you want to help, there's a Time article linked in the description with options for donations of cash, supplies, or volunteer work. Ida made landfall as a Category 4 and caused flooding, power outages, tornadoes, and destruction from Louisiana to New York. If you are among the impacted, our hearts go out to you. Stay strong. And now, on to the tech news. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. I'm gonna go ahead and have a beer today, why not? So just on Friday, we had a big leak drop about Intel's upcoming Alder Lake S desktop CPUs and Z690 motherboards. Apparently, they will be announced at Intel's innovation event that goes from October 27th to 28th and will actually launch on November 19th if WCCF Tech's unnamed sources are to be believed. This falls in line with expectations based on Intel's Architecture Day announcements and other rumors that have been flying, although it's nice to have the date nailed down so we can all clear our calendars. Again, that's if these rumors are true, Hassan over at WCCF Tech is known to be crafty and mischievous. These traits are shared by Momomo underscore US on Twitter, who also commonly posts leaked info and apparently has the lowdown on the CPU SKUs that we can expect to see, from the 12100 all the way up to the 12900K, with some F variants that don't have iGPUs sprinkled in for flavor. It's still unknown which of these will be launching this year and which ones will push to 2022, but if the November 19th launch date is accurate, we have less than 10 weeks until Intel's new mainstream platform goes up for sale. Oh yeah, cheers. We continue with evil rumors about NVIDIA GPU supply. No, you're not caught in a time loop. These are new evil rumors about NVIDIA GPU supply, and if true, they indicate a 30% drop in supply, with the only silver lining being that the source of this evil rumor is a Chinese message board, Boban Tang, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing perfectly, as reported by Gamersky.com. True or not, GPU prices have not continued to drop as they did over the summer, with contributing factors ranging from rebounding cryptocurrency prices to continued component shortages to NVIDIA's hash rate limiter being partially hacked. This particular story adds no details as to the reason behind the potential 30% supply dip though, but I'd personally speculate that they might be setting GPUs aside to stockpile for the 2022 launch of super variants of the 30 series cards. Again, that is just my speculation. Maybe Jensen just got tired of everyone complaining and decided to do this just to spite us. Maybe it's not even true at all. Isn't it thrilling to just not know things? Speaking of not knowing things, AMD would probably rather you didn't know about the recently publicized security flaw that affects all of their Zen-based processors. It's called transient execution of non-canonical accesses, and it's similar to the meltdown flaw that affected Intel chips in that it allows illegal data flow between microarchitectural elements, although it has a way less badass name. AMD has already acknowledged the issue and even widened the scope of affected CPUs. The flaw was uncovered by security researchers from Dresden Technology University, but they only tested Zen Plus and Zen 2 CPUs, whereas AMD has now stated that all Zen processors are at risk. Fortunately, most home users don't have much to worry about, as this was all disclosed to AMD back in October 2020, who has since developed driver patches for Ryzen chipsets that went public last week. Software vendors need to patch their code as well though, so it's best to keep your system up to date whenever possible. And since Intel got to call theirs Meltdown, we should come up with a similar name for AMD's version. Let's look up Catastrophe. I imagine any of these would work. Let's, let's call it Misadventure. The new AMD Misadventure flaw. Ooh, Cataclysm. How about just a holy mess or double trouble? I feel like these vary quite, quite significantly in severity. Speaking of a synonym for catastrophe, Windows 11 has now been confirmed to launch in about a month, on October 5th, despite things not going very swimmingly with the preview version thus far. What I find baffling is that consumer interest actually seems to be there. Ever since Microsoft mentioned Windows 11, people seem to want to know more and are eager to try it out. 
What they found out though, is that Microsoft can't seem to decide what the actual f***ing hardware requirements are. And setting a cutoff point that excludes the majority of Intel 7000 series CPUs and original Zen-based Ryzen processors, which are both less than five years old, as well as anything prior to that, made a lot of people concerned that their system wouldn't be supported. Then people started hacking the Insider preview to install Windows 11 on older hardware and saw that it worked just fine. Then Microsoft said, okay, you can install on older platforms, but it has to be a clean install. And then they said, wait, if you do that, then you can't access Windows updates. So you just won't get security updates because those aren't necessary, right, Microsoft? And then this week to prove their point, I guess, Microsoft started booting Windows 11 Insider Preview users off of their OS if the hardware requirements weren't met. And now there's a lovely bug in the latest build that just makes your start menu and taskbar disappear. Again, probably not necessary items, I guess, but super inconvenient. And the culprit seems to be a Microsoft Teams pop-up. So, Windows 11, launching October 5th. Looking great so far. Definitely no substance to that every other Windows version sucks curse. I've had enough. It's time for Tech Briefs, where the news constantly accelerates to slow the passage of time. Western Digital would like you to forget about that whole changing the WD Blue SN550's NAND scandal from last week, and instead consider their new hard drives with OptiNAND, which uses flash memory to store metadata about drive operations to improve capacity, performance, and reliability. Coming soon in 20 terabyte drives, but potentially enabling up to 50 terabytes of capacity per unit. That might actually be enough storage to keep hard drives relevant for a bit longer before their market is inevitably consumed by SSDs. We finally have a solution to the mystery of the dead EVGA RTX 3090s that popped up back in July, and the culprit apparently was not Amazon's New World MMO beta. It seems only 24 cards or so actually bit the dust, a lot fewer than the hype surrounding this incident would lead you to believe, and X-ray analysis revealed that they were all from an early batch of EVGA cards that suffered from poor soldering workmanship around the card's MOSFET power circuits. New World just stressed the cards in a way that exposed these assembly flaws, and thankfully the cards were still under warranty. Looks like this one's solved, Scoob. Aha, it was the old man from the mill. AMD is rumored to have Threadripper 5000 CPUs launching in Q4, and reputable system integrator and hardware testing source Puget Systems might already have a Pro 5995WX in their possession if benchmarks posted to and then removed from their website are any indication. The 64-core 128-thread CPU was paired with a reference WRX80 motherboard and 64 gigabytes of 3200 MHz memory, but the test suite includes some less common titles that lack good comparison examples from other CPUs, which kind of sucks because that would have made the information way more useful. Some more beer, that's what I need. NVIDIA is catering to the crypto industry yet again, it would seem, this time with a card dubbed the 170HX, as seen in pictures shared on a Chinese social media site that were shared again on Twitter and then picked up by Tech Power Up. It supposedly pushes 164 million hashes per second, almost double that of the 90HX, NVIDIA's current top CMP card that hits 86 million hashes per second. It's also passively cooled, has 4,480 CUDA cores, eight gigabytes of HBM2E memory, and is based on the GA100 GPU. Don't worry though, it also only has a PCIe Gen 1 by 4 connector, so it can never ever actually be used for gaming. China has given parents across the world a very good comparison to use when they try to get their kids to stop playing video games. Miners, as in people under 18, not crypto miners, will now be allowed only three hours of video games per week from 8 to 9 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. China's recent proclivities for authoritarian rulemaking notwithstanding, here in the U.S., this policy should make it easier to convince little Mikey to stop playing Roblox after his six-hour session. I'm just kidding. It won't. Meanwhile, Apple announced Wednesday that iPhone users in Arizona and Georgia can now use their phone to digitize their driver's license or state ID, which is either just the way things will work in the glorious future of tomorrow, or tech and the government colluding to harvest our data and control every aspect of our daily lives, depending on who you ask. This is supposedly just being done for the sake of convenience, and more states, Connecticut, Iowa, Kentucky, Maryland, Oklahoma, and Utah, will also be joining the program in the future. What could go wrong? Speaking of wrong, Amazon's Blue Origin space program, which seems to primarily exist to stroke Jeff Bezos' ego, has used the U.S. legal system to attempt to delay the expanded rollout of SpaceX's Starlink plan, which uses tiny satellites to provide internet access. SpaceX already has 1,700 satellites up, providing beta service to 100,000 plus customers, while Blue Origin's plans for a similar service won't get underway until 2023. 
So Amazon is trying to get the FCC to delay their space internet competitor. I'm all for healthy competition and technological progress, but using these methods to hamper your opposition is about as noble as patent trolling. I'm not saying that Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos should have a televised fight to the death to resolve this. I'm just saying that that would be really fun to watch. So there you have it guys, tech news for the past week. Go enjoy your long weekend US residents. And if you're outside the US, why not start celebrating Labor Day this year as well and take Monday off yourselves, you know, Solidarity. Gotta love Trader Jose. Before you go though, your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, including the glasses and the coasters and the bottle openers. Uh, you, you know, you get sets of two and that way you can cover all of your beverage needs. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, including tech news next week. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. It's good, it's good beer. 550 for a six pack of these.